G'day everyone, Viv here. Welcome back. I hope you're all keeping well. Shock horror, as I mentioned before. I'm going to paint this uh, little rock formation that we made uh, in the previous video. Um, now, I don't normally show a lot of painting because uh, painting is a very personal thing and uh, it's just a matter of slapping some paint on and blending it around a little bit. But um, given that uh, miniature painting channels are so popular, people are obviously keen to see how people paint stuff, so maybe I should do it a little bit more. Who knows? Um, I always, for scenery, use uh, just regular um, tins of uh, house paint. Um, little sample pots. Um, this was a, a seconds paint you can find in your paint store or, or in the um, sort of paint section of your hardware stores. Paints that people have had mixed for them and, that, and they don't like them. They generally sell these uh, cheaper than buying uh, new tubs. So um, big, big tins, big four litre tins. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a low sheen or a gloss, you can always sort that out. So let's crack on with this, paint this piece and uh, have another fit piece finished for our little table here. So here we go, I've got a selection of different brushes here and, and my paint off to the side here. Now I've also got a paint stirrer here. Uh, this is very important for people to remember. Uh, with your tins of paint, always stir them. Especially if they're in a tin like this, the, 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 the colors will separate, the oils will separate, and you should always stir a paint in its tin rather than shake it. Um, because as soon as you start shaking paints, you'll end up with paint in the lid here that then drips into the seal around the outside. It will also drip into the seal around the top of your tin. And then your tin, tin start getting all gunky and, 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 and hard to close and uh, then you can start scratching it out. As soon as you start scratching paint out of here, you start uh, removing the surface of the tin here that stops it from rusting. Um, so always stir a paint. Um, never shake it. You'll always be able to put the lids back on. Your paints will last a lot longer. So I've done that to this big one over here already. The paint that I'm using um, is this sort of low sheen, really dark brown sort of color. Um, this is what it is. It's a solar guard base and I don't know what color is in here. It doesn't matter. It, this is a dark brown. Now I generally always paint stuff uh, that's going to be concretes or rocks in a, a brown base first. Very rarely do I ever actually base anything in black. And, and I paint it in a, in a brown color because it gives our piece a, a, a much more uh, warmer finish. So I'm just going to do a couple of uh, quick passes with this big brush. I'm just quite liberally splashing this paint on here just to cover these big surfaces. You can wear gloves when you paint. Uh, I like to get messy so um, probably would have been a good idea to leave something that you can hold on to but uh, I, I don't work that way. So let's get on and paint this. Okay, so once I've got my, my sort of majority of it done, it's time to move to a smaller brush. Um, these are just very cheap, uh, I think this is probably pig hair. Um, they're very coarse brushes and uh, they break down quite, uh, quite quickly. Um, so I'm going to use a smaller brush I reckon. And now we just start working into all these little nooks and crannies, jabbing the brush in there. Load it up quite heavily with paint so that you can get it in there. Now, it doesn't matter if you end up with little bits of your uh, foam color coming through after we've finished this, uh, because we'll take care of that in the next phase, or further down the track actually. Uh, not the next step, but further down the track. So again, I'm just going to quickly go through and jam this brush into all of these gaps. There's plenty of paint on here, it's just a matter of moving it around now, so I'll crack on and get that done. So there we go, we've got our piece uh, completely based now. As I mentioned before, you, you do want to try and get your brush into as many of those small cracks as possible, but if there is, in my case, small bits of yellow coming through that you just can't get a brush to, um, I wouldn't worry about it uh, at this stage. We can always uh, disguise that a little bit later on. So I'm going to let this dry for a while. Not completely, I still want it to be just a little bit wet, 
but uh, I'm going to let it dry for a little bit and we'll come back shortly. So on with the next step, this is not completely dry and you might be able to see as we look around here bits of yellow poking through and some of the white plaster and I'm not really too concerned as I mentioned about those before. We're just going to uh, slap our colours on and take care of that in a minute. I'm going to put some of this orange in there. And some of this sort of yellowish sort of colour. And uh, I'm just going to smash it in there. At this stage I'm not really too concerned about it. Alright, might not look like much at this stage. But before that dries, I quickly want to whack on some grey. So I don't have any pre-mixed grey colours at the moment. Normally I have three different shades of grey that, uh, that I use, but uh, I generally find that uh, uh, when uh, I'm painting like this anyway, I end up doing so many different layers. This paint is going on seven years old, I reckon. Um, it's, it still works. So I'm just going to take some of this black and... find a grey colour that I'm happy with. And that's just So there we go, we've muted some of those colours back down. Now this I will let dry properly. So now we're at the stage where we can start adding our greys here to bring it back up to a, a grey colour. And here it just, just sort of happens quite randomly for me. I'll take a little bit of black and uh, white, mix them together until I find a colour that I'm happy with and then uh, brush it on. And what I'll do from here uh, is I'll just continuously bring the colour up whilst it's still wet. Um, that's 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 the way I do it, but uh, you may prefer to wait for your colours to dry in between. Um, I don't. I just want to get the job done and then <laughs> move on to something else. As long as you're careful and you're light. With your brush strokes you can you can do it all in one go. Okay, so at this stage I'm happy enough to let this layer dry and um, then I'll come back with a much brighter colour and then we'll wash it down. And at that stage when we're washing it down, we'll take care of all the little bits of yellow foam that are exposed. So let's let this dry and we'll come back with a much lighter colour again. Rightio, so finishing this thing off, we just want to bring up our layer quite high now. So there we go, I'm happy with the, the highlighting so far. Now all I need to do is dull this down with a little bit of black wash. So the black wash I'm going to be using is, uh, basically it's, it's black tinter. If you go to your, your hardware store and they have those big round paint machines where they go click, click, click and push little drops of paint into a base paint, um, that tint. Um, so this isn't black paint, it's a, a black tint. Um, and so there's a, just a little bit of this in this jar here with some water and some dish soap. So once this dries again, um, I'll come back and uh, we'll brush this all over the, the rock areas. That'll go in, the foam will absorb uh, this black colour and turn it black. So if there is any yellow parts anywhere, you can see here a little bit where the foam has started to separate. Another reason why I don't like using hot glue. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll turn that bit black. 
So we'll come back and uh, finish that off. So there we go, there's our black wash done. It's raining a little bit, but you can see now, uh, you can still see a little bit of yellow in there, but I'm not too fussed about that. I'm gonna shove a piece of uh, mm, clump foliage in there. But you can see our gap, which was over here before, uh, which is was yellow, is now no longer yellow. <laughs> uh, our wash has worked. So there we go, we'll let that dry, then I'll do a final dry brush, and it will be finished. Then we can flock it, and then it will be finished. Okay, let's get our final dry brush on this and then get it flocked and be finished with it. Um, there we go, there's our final dry brush. I'm just going to match it against the other one. This is going to dry off a little bit, but it's not too bad. This one has a different shape, and I, I spent a lot more time actually carving out some rock structures here, which I didn't do on this one, and it kind of looks very flat. But uh, nonetheless, um, maybe let it dry, and then another final highlight, and we'll be at the same uh, color tones, and then I can flock it. There we go. I'm reasonably happy with that. So final step now is just to put some flock on here. Now I've left one edge sort of quite uh, rounded, just so I've got a little hill here that units can get up. Uh, uh, sloped hills, really s sort of shallow slopes are nice, but sometimes you can't put figures on them, so I like to leave the hill sometimes, uh, the gradient on it, quite narrow, so that it, uh, I'm not losing a whole bunch of width uh, for when the uh, unit needs to move around. So uh, we're just going to go through and uh, put some straight up PVA everywhere. So there we go, we've got our PVA all over our board now, I'm just going to take my uh, Soil, this is Woodland Scenics soil, and just sort of sprinkle it around. Cool, now we'll take the earth tone and do the same thing, just sprinkle it around, looking for the gaps. Now we'll take our green grass and just sort of fill in the blanks. There we go, so we'll let that dry and uh, then we'll match it against the other pieces that this needs to go with just to see how it blends. And um, if we need to make some variations to it, we can easily do that. Otherwise, uh, it's finished. Right, so we're done. Here's the set that this is going with. So you can see it matches reasonably well with uh, the stone effect on the other rocks. At least the colour. I'm not massively happy with the carving, like I mentioned. I really should have cut in here more, created some... Uh, shapes in the rocks, but um, nonetheless it's done. It hasn't been sealed yet. None of these pieces have been sealed. They'll all get sealed and dried up at the same time. Just a couple more pieces to finish off for this set. Um, and then it's done. So I'm pretty happy. And we're done. You'll find much better painters out there who, who can paint rock much better than I can. Um, I, I follow some techniques that I, I've been using for a while and uh, I try to keep it the same, but more often than not, I change it every time I paint something, uh, which is why I'm just trying to concentrate on a little set right now. We'll get that done and sent off, and um, 
you'll find much better people out there who can paint much better than I can. But uh, there we go. There's the little rock, the hill for this set uh, of stuff that I'm building. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll catch you next time. See ya.